Now let's move on here in verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I'll send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants, upon thy people, into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. You see, up to this sign, this plague, why, it had been on the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were. And a great many people were probably telling Pharaoh, well, after all, they are suffering as well as our people. It's obvious that this is not from God, but has a natural explanation. Or maybe one of our gods happens to be doing this. Well, now, in this plague, God makes a distinction. From here on, none of the plagues will touch the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel are, and the judgment will be upon the land of Egypt. Now, this is the judgment of the flies. That of the lice was against the earth god. But now the flies are actually here. Their beetles are scarabs, as they are known in Egypt. Many of them are gold that they found in the tombs in Egypt. They are sacred to Ra, the sun god, Ra Ammon, and also to Kippara. These are the gods now that are being reached through this. And that which to the Egyptian was sacred, a place of worship, and now he's touching the main god and goddess of the land of Egypt, Ra Ammon. And it causes Pharaoh at this time to want to reach some sort of a compromise with Moses. And notice now the proposal that Pharaoh did. I'm reading verse 24 now of the 8th of Exodus. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And actually, that scarab spoke of eternal life. You find them in the tombs today. They were sacred, as I say. Well, imagine this most sacred thing becoming a curse to the people and certainly a plague on all the land. So Pharaoh wants to work out a compromise. And you have two of them here. You'll find out later he'll make two more compromises, four compromises in all. And here is the first one. Now, verse 25. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. You remember now, Moses and Aaron said, We want to go three days' journey in the wilderness and sacrifice. But now Pharaoh said, All right, sacrifice, but do so in the land. Now, notice this. And Moses said, It's not meat so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. Now, this compromise, first one of Pharaoh, is the same kind of a compromise that is given to Christians today. And it's always satanic. And this first compromise is just simply this. It says, be a Christian. And we think that's very nice for you to be a Christian. But don't be a narrow Christian. Be broad-minded. fact of the matter is, what they really mean is, don't change your life. And friends, if you don't change your life, you're not a Christian, you see. Now, don't come back and say to me, well, now you're saying 
that you have to perform good works to be a Christian. No, I don't say it that way. May I say this, that you're saved by faith in Christ and nothing else in works is excluded. But if you have put saving faith in Christ, it'll change your life. And that's where conduct comes in. You see, Christianity believes that the life should be changed and the conduct should be changed. But you've got to change the inner man first and not the outward man. That is the thing that's all important. And this is the kind of compromise that you hear today. And right now, my point is that we have a church that's pretty well compromised. It's still in the land of Egypt. You can't tell the difference today between the average Christian and the average man of the world. You see them in business. You see them in social gatherings. When I hear the fact that over 50% of the citizens of the United States are members of some religious body. And then I am in public places today. I looked on the plane the other day, and they were serving cocktails, and I like to do something to pass the time, and I just began to count the people that were having cocktails, and I decided that that would be too big an undertaking. I just counted those that didn't. I would say that in the plane there were less than four people that did not take cocktails. Now, friends, there must have been some church members on there. And if they are, they are sacrificing in the land of Egypt. They are broad-minded. They don't want to be squares. They want to live like the world. Friends, we are in a race today, and it's a race with two horses. One's a black horse, one's a white horse. And you put one foot on one and one foot on the other one, and you're going to make a strange discovery They're both going the opposite direction. And you've got to make up your mind which one you're going with. And here you find that Moses will not accept this. He says, we'll go three days' journey in the wilderness. And then Pharaoh comes up with his second one here. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away and treat for me. Well, now, this is just a shade difference than the other. He says, don't go very far away. Also, entreat for me. And again, this is the same sort of a compromise. Only today we find that a great many churches, even fundamental churches, are adopting the program of the world. They are running their entire program on the basis of banquets and promotion and that sort of thing. Yes, they fundamentally say they believe the book, but they're not very far away, you see. They're very much like the world. And you honestly can't tell the difference between some churches today and the Rotary Club or any of these other knife and fork clubs. They're about the same. There's not much difference. And they're made up, I would say, largely of those that do not know what it is really to trust Christ. Now, that's not satisfactory. Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I'll entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, from his people, and there remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. Now, that's important to see, friends, because it's Pharaoh that's hardening his heart, actually. All God is doing is making him reveal what is already in his heart. 